the words of Matt Blunt, an American politician and former naval officer. Child abuse and neglect offend the basic values of our state. We have a responsibility to provide safe settings for at-risk children and facilitate permanent placement for children who cannot return home. You're watching Nav Tip on the Move. My name is Angela Agwegi. Our package on this episode is a must watch. It highlights the growing problem of abuse and exploitation of children, especially domestic helps. What is the role of NAPTIP in stemming the tide of this ugly trend? Our feature will tell you more. Don't go away. It's NAPTIP on the move. This victim was rescued by Naptip four years ago when his father inflicted injuries on him. Today, he has grown into a teenager under the care and protection of Naptip. Our role in caring for the children, our victims, are so enormous. And first of all, I want us to know who is a child. A child is anyone who is below the age of 18. And so for us in Aptic, we have the mandate to protect such children. Over the years, in, uh, the agency has been able to put so many things together to achieve this protection. Because for us, victims protection is very key. And so we take it uh, very seriously. The human rights of these children, first of all, their fundamental human rights are so key to us. And so because they are victims, we do not see them not to have their rights. They still have their rights to enjoy as human beings. So for us in Aptip, we protect their human rights and we make sure that everything they need as a human, irrespective of whether they are victims or not, is given to them. And then when they come into our shelter, we do a lot of counseling. You know, counseling is a, is a long process. We take our time. We have seasoned counselors that are trained and retrained, so they get the best. We cancel them in order for us to get the true story of where they're coming from and to help them heal. We cancel them so that they can take decisive decisions concerning their lives. We cancel them so that they will know that even though they've gone through everything negative until they came to Napti, they still have a very bright future. Their lives is in their hands. So we, we make them see the pluses of being alive and why they should forge ahead. And it has really helped this victim over the years. NAPDIP provides comprehensive care for victims. We have shelters all across the country. We have shelters in 14 states. And the Director General of the agency, Professor Fatima uh, Waziri Azi, is seriously ensuring and trying to see that every state has a command. We are in 32 states. But we have 14 shelters existing for now to ensure that all these states have shelters because that is the first home we need to put these children when they come to us. We, make, we need to provide home away from home from them to reduce the trauma they've been through. And once they come to our shelter, the next thing we look into is their medical care because some of them have been highly traumatized. They come with a lot of illnesses, some come with diseases. So we need to quickly address that so that it does not escalate. Then of course, these victims need justice. Human beings have put them through all of this. And so in the process of counseling, we also avail them that area for them to know that they can have justice to what has happened to them. So the legal support is also there. The agency has a full department that takes care of that. And we've won a lot of conditions over the years. You won't believe what we've done. And it, it gives these victims a brighter hope, a future, because everything we get from these um, traffickers are given back to the victims. We have a trafficking trust fund. And then when the victims are with us, we know they have come traumatized. Some of them don't want to talk to you for days. And they're going through a lot. And now you know this mental health issue is very, very key. And so we see them a lot when they bring these children. So what do we do? We give them a lot of time. We try to help them get themselves back. So we do a lot of trauma healing. And the DG has been gracious enough to even train the counselors of the department on trauma healing 
an expert was brought to train us so that we can also you know help the victim you know you can't give what you don't have and so this training has really helped us and all the counselors in the department were involved in this training and so right now we have different skills we put out there to help these victims come out of trauma in recent times the growing trend of child exploitation and abuse especially domestic helps has informed a lot of rescues by NAPTIP the issues of domestic uh, you know servants or rather domestic uh, servitude is getting so much in life city but the good thing is that the general public are becoming aware in fact as a matter of fact most of the cases that we get here they come from either whistleblowers or from the neighbors the awareness is so much for instance there is a case of a 14 year old girl who was uh, brought in by an agent to her madam and the neighbors noticed that that girl the earliest time she was she slept was the one of 2 a.m and she would sleep by 2 a.m and wake up by 5 and any day she misses waking up by 5 is a problem for her the, the auntie will so maltreat her to the extent that the neighbors were getting so worried at a point they now say madam why don't you take this child back to the parent because she was looking so small 14 year old we also have a case of a 13 year old girl the case was reported by a whistleblower and she told us that there was never a day she would not see she, she usually sees the lady the young girl being given serious punishment by the auntie sometimes she'll be asked to kneel down on the floor and now face the sun and not that she does it within one or two minutes she stays there for hours so neighbors were no longer comfortable sometimes the, the young girl will be asked to come and bait open open space for that 13 year old girl to be demonized in that form staying outside to bed as a punishment outside carrying water from ground floor to second floor so the neighbors reported to us and what we did we intervened we rescued the child and this this the perpetrator is now you know facing the full justice they also have the one of a nine-year-old girl the agent will just take her to a place after a while, after maybe one, uh, six months, she now takes her to another place. But unfortunately for the agent this time around, as they were moving to another location, the girl started shouting, job by beggar roundabout in, in we'll say here. The girl started screaming. So the thing attracted the attention of people. And you know, there, there's always a police, uh, be, uh, you know, people stay there on uh, guard duty. And that was how they now came and they intervened, intercepted the, the agent that uh, had this girl trying to take her to another location and the girl said when we interviewed her that the, the man takes the 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 madame pays about twenty thousand naira the agent gives the mother the mother of this victim ten thousand and pockets the rest ten thousand why they allow the girl to languish napchip received so many cases of child molestation trafficking and abuse we also have a young girl also of 15 you know the the auntie brought her before she died and the auntie after she died the guy said he was confided on a, another a young girl that lives in that vicinity that she wasn't seen her period and the lady became curious and i said who how, how is it that uh, you have a problem or whatever he said no that if the the auntie's uh, uh, husband was sleeping with her and this was just about a month after the auntie died so we had to go there you know we rescued her and the case is ongoing we also get reports of parents exploiting their own children where a a a, a man sub, you know subjected a seven year old child to fetching water from the stream almost on daily basis seven year old child will carry bucket to go and fetch water then there are also instances where they will send their children to go and also hawk on the street i recall where uh, in somewhere in apple where we saw a young girl of 13 climbing from ground floor to about a uh, fourth floor supplying water she does that every blessed day for like four days in a week we found that it was the father that asked her to be doing that so that she can use he can use that one to pay her 
school fees. That's exploitative labor. The agency ensures total rehabilitation and empowerment of victims. Okay, so for us in Naptuk, why these victims are with us in the shelter? And because our shelter is a short-term shelter, they can't stay there forever, uh, we need to quickly do family tracing. We need to know where are these victims from. Is it the family that put them through this? Does the family even want to see them again? Do they even also want to go back to the family you know where they are coming from so we do family tracing and in the process of doing the family tracing we are able to ensure that there is a safe landing for the victim when she's done with us in active and she's been reunited we also use the opportunity to check the family themselves do they need empowerment because if they do we also have to work in that area else when these victims go back they may be retrafficked again and if it's a family that was actually the cause or the reason why the child was trafficked or they are the ones that actually trafficked the child we cannot return such a victim and some of them have even told us why with us because we've cancelled them they tell us everything in confidence and they tell you we do not want to go back home and they give us their reasons and so when that is established we look for foster homes and for them that want to go to school we send them to school. So the reuniting back to the family is not um, like, oh, you came today, the next day you must go back to your family. No, we take our time and ensure that they are fine. And then we also do the family reunion, of course, after the tracing, if everything is okay and the child has gone through school or has gone through all the skills, vocational training and all that, we can return the child to the family and, of course, back to the society at large. Then why they in rehabilitation? We do a lot of skill acquisition for them. For those that don't want to go to school, they need to learn something because they're going to leave the shelter one day and what are they going to stand on? And when they learn that skill, we also try to empower them. In fact, we do not try to empower them. We empower them because if you do not empower them, they are going to go back to what brought them in the first place. They need to be doing something. And so we do a lot of monitoring when we do empowerment so that these victims just go back to the society, maybe sell all these items, go back to what it is, or even the family will put pressure on them to do the same. So we monitor them for like three years before we think about disengagement. Sensitization is key in child protection. Some of the cases we receive They've not even heard about NAPTI. Probably that's why they're still doing what they're doing. And so we are going to the grassroots. We're doing a lot of sensitization now. The DG of the agency, Professor Fatima Waziri Azim, is so key. She loves sensitization. She believes that you should handle this issue before it escalates. So she has given everything within her to ensure that this thing goes on air, goes to the grassroots. We have um, our IC materials that we use in carrying out sensitization in pigeon. We have it in the three different languages just to ensure that nobody you know, is ignorant of this crime. And so we do a lot of sensitization. We go to schools, we go to market. There's a full department existing just for sensitization. So we do a lot of that as well. NAPTIPS enabling laws provide for child protection. I want to start first with the constitution because that's a grown norm for law in Nigeria. And under the Constitution, Section 36, whatever applies to the adults equally applies to the children. The children have, children have a right to life, they have a right to dignity, they have a right to fair hearing. So all those rights are inherent rights, which even though accrues to adults, equally accrues to children. Now, when we talk about the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act 2015, that law is a law that is so dynamic, so powerful, guarantees the absolute protection of children in Nigeria. First of all, in Section 1 of the Act, of Violence Against the Verb Act, it talks about rape. Now, rape is no longer understood in the way we formerly used to view it. Somebody can now equally commit rape by just using fingers to touch the vagina of a child. So that is also to amplify the, 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 the condemnation of the society, Nigerian society, against the sexual abuse of children. 
And under that law, if you ever abuse a child, the minimum punishment is 12 years imprisonment without an option of fine. Also, under the VAP law, children are protected from emotional and uh, psychological abuse. Sometimes we think that uh, abuse is only physical. No. Sometimes abuse through emotional and psychological means are even more destructive than the physical abuse. When you constantly tell a child, you're stupid, you're useless, you can't amount to anything, you are repeatedly pushing that into the psyche of a child. The child will grow up to believe that he or she is useless and that will destroy the self-esteem of that child. And that law, our law, the VAP law, condemns it. And also, even the physical abuse of children, such acts are condemned under the VAP law. And anybody that does such act is also going to get an imprisonment that is not less than two, two years. The penalties for child offences are more stringent. Under the TPR 2015, the act also criminalizes sexual exploitation of children. And under that law, the exploitation of children carries a higher penalty than that of the adult. If you sexually abuse a child under the TP Act, for an adult, you get a punishment of not less than five years. But for a child, you get a punishment of not less than seven years and without an option of fine. And also, you can also even be made to pay fine in addition to the imprisonment term. Section 23 of the TP Act, you employ a child of less than 12 years as a domestic servant. That is a strict liability offense. People ought to know that employing children as domestic servants is strictly prohibited in Nigerian society. Under the Act, if you employ a child as less than 12 years under Section 23 sub 1 of the TP Act, your term of imprisonment is the least is six months. That's the least number of months that somebody that committed that crime will be imprisoned and not exceeding seven years. Under that environment, if that child is inflicted with physical harm or sexually exploited, the term of imprisonment increases, not less than three years. It could be 10 years, it could be 15 years, but it can never be less than three years for somebody that has sexually exploited a child while under employment or physically injured a child under employment. So these are measures created by the law to safeguard children. As always, a word for parents. We discover that in the process of um, keeping these children in the shelter, in the process of counseling, 50% of these children are coming in through gender-based violence, which is an issue that is so rampant also in the agency. I know the agency has been given the two mandates to, to carry out. And so this comes more from the house helps with what we have noticed. They come to our shelters with a lot of scars on their bodies. Scars you will not believe a human has, you know, inflicted on them. And sometimes you look at the age of these children, it's so pathetic. A child as little as seven years is being given out for house help. And this child is actually given to a family member in trust. And the family member does not see it that way. They believe you're here to work for me and anything I want is what you do. And they inflict so much injuries on very little minute offenses. Even if you have 20 children, please keep them in your home. Give them whatever you can afford to give them. Stop giving out your children, especially the little ones, out for help. It has never come out, you know, well. And these children, if at that stage they are already being traumatized, you can imagine how they are going to grow up, how their thinking faculty is going to be set for life. So it's a big issue. So just keep your children within yourself. Children are God's gift. Stop giving them out. People 
who feel that children are easy prey. Watch out. Naptip is after you. Child protection is paramount to Naptip, and this is why the agency is leaving no stone unturned in its counseling, rehabilitation, and empowerment of victims and severe punishment for offenders. Shun the culture of silence. Report all cases to Naptip, and justice will be served. Naptip on the Move is sponsored by Expertise France, funded by the European Union. If we hope for a better future, then we must ensure adequate care and protection for our children. Naptip Events is up next. Keep watching. The Director General of NAPTIP, Professor Fatima Waziri Azi, attended a Human Trafficking and Child Exploitation Executive Policy and Development Symposium on Transnational Organized Crime from August 6 to August 30, 2023. The symposium was organized by the International Law Enforcement Academy, ILEA in Roswell, New Mexico, USA. ILEA is the U.S. Department of State's Advanced Training Academy for International Law Enforcement Professionals. The symposium focused on building a comprehensive national response model for combating trafficking in persons and online child exploitation. It included training on the latest policy guidelines and legislative developments concerning trafficking in persons and online child exploitation. The goal of the course was to facilitate discussions amongst the delegates on how to effectively and strategically develop a comprehensive response to the problems of human trafficking and child exploitation. The symposium was facilitated by expert instructors from the Federal Law Enforcement Training Centers, Department of Justice's Child Exploitation and Obscenity Section, and Homeland Security Investigations. At the end of the symposium, certificates were presented to the participants. The Director General of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, Professor Fatima Waziri Azi. The three and a half week symposium was attended by forty one delegates from ten countries. Other delegates from Nigeria were Honorable Justice Ogbonaya of the FCT High Court and Hassan Tahir, Director Legal and Prosecution, NAPTEP. NAPTEP officers at the Abia State Liaison Office carried out a sensitization campaign against human trafficking at Ahiauku in Olokoro Town, Umahia, Abia State. Head of NAPTEP Liaison Office in Abia, in Kemdalim Okafo, sensitized the traders on the dangers of human trafficking and advised them to report all cases of child abuse, sexual exploitation and baby sales to NAPTIP. In a related development, the NAPTIP team in Abia State Liaison Office, led by Nkemdenim Okafo, also carried out a sensitization exercise at the Unkwoi Ebu Market in Umahia, North Local Government Area. The NAPTIP officers also enlightened the traders and people at the market on the ills of human trafficking highlighting the various tactics employed by traffickers and encourage them to report all cases of human trafficking, sexual exploitation, baby sales, and child abuse to NAPTIP. Officers of NAPTIP at the Ebony State Liaison Office were at St. Anthony's Parish, Ogbago, to sensitize women on the ills of human trafficking and smuggling of migrants at the Women's Annual General Meeting. The women were educated on the causes, forms, and effects of human trafficking including how to identify traffickers and victims, as well as the reporting channels. For more inquiries and support, or to report cases of suspected human trafficking, violence against persons, and child abuse, please call NAPTIP hotline 0703-000203 or the short code 627 or email us info at naptip.gov.ng. Visit our website www.naptip.gov.ng 
follow us on our social media platforms at Naptip Nigeria or watch our videos on YouTube. Our time is up, but I must thank you for watching and urge you to report all cases of child abuse to Naptip. I'm Angela Agwegi. Goodbye.